Hello folks, Lord Riggs with you once again. It's Anzac Day 220. We're going to have a look at the Flemington program and uh, a pretty uh, interesting program it is too. There's a few shorties like Russian Camelot in race $5.80. A little bit too short for my liking, but it'll probably win that race. But I'll tell you who I'm going for at long odds in that particular event shortly. Um, you'll have to check scratchings yourself. I... Uh, I've recorded this before the late scratching, so in the event of any scratchings, if my, my tips are scratched, you'll have to just pick one for yourself or take the favourite or just don't have a bet in that race. In race one, that's the Anzac Day Stakes, 1,400 metres. I've gone for number two. It's hot, 20 to one. In race two, thank you, Frontline Workers Handicap, 1,600 metres. Number five, Peerless. Um, Peerless is uh, 25 to 1. Race 3, the Auckland Racing Club Trophy, over 1,400 metres. Number 7, Foxy Lady is my choice, 25 to 1. Race 4, the William Newton VC Handicap, Victoria Cross winner. Number 8, Jack Regan. How could I not go for Jack Regan? Very good form, last two wins, and it's about a 10 to 1 chance. Race 5, it's the Peter Armitage Handicap, 1,700 metres. Number 15 is uh, Lord Riggs' selection. Single crown, 80 to 1. Race 6, the VRC St. Ledger. 2,800 metres. Number 9, Alexander Hamilton, a 70 to 1 chance. Race 7, number 15, and that is Miss Norway, 25 to 1. And in the final event, the Les Carlion Handicap. Les wrote some marvellous books on uh, on the Anzacs and Gallipoli. Get them out of the library if you can't afford them. Race 8, number 20, and that's Instant Derive, a 25 to 1 chance. They are Lord Rigg's selections for Flemington today, Anzac Day 220. Going quickly through the early quaddies, pens and papers at the ready. Race 1, 1, 3, 5, 4 and 2. Race 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 12 and 13. Race 3... 1, 2, 4, 7, 8, 11 and 12. Race 4, 1, 6, 8, 14 and 9. Uh, for $105, that'll get you 10% or $210, 20%, which means I'm thinking that the early quaddy might pay 10 grand, in which case you might get a grand or two grand for, for, the, for the, that's a tenfold return on your investment. And the main quaddy, Lord Riggs likes in race 5, Numbers 2, 4, and 15. Race 6, 1, 2, 9, 7, 4, 11. Race 7, 1, 6, 15, 10, and 13. And race 8, 8, 3, 17, 20, and 11. As I say, it's all pending scratching. So if there's late scratchings, just uh, you'll get a bigger percentage. Just knock them out of the equation if they're quaddies. Uh, or it's, if it's my standout selection in a particular race, just don't have a flood of that race. Sit it out. Have a nice lunch. Have a nice drink. Shout your friends. Or oh, ring up a friend from your lounge room or your living room seeing you, you're uh, self-isolating. Um, farewell to Andrew Bensley, uh, Sky Racing Australia's marvellous racing journalist and he's been a marvellous presenter over the last two decades or however long it's been. Andrew, as I've said on an earlier video I'd done, I think you've been a tremendous asset to the racing industry. And if you want to know more about what I truly feel about Andrew Hoss Bensley, check out the earlier video uh, that I've done for the tips today at Rose Hill Gardens, Anzac Day 220. It's all very complimentary, Andrew. Nothing to worry about. Before I go, lest we forget any of your relatives or descendants who served in any conflict, fell in any conflict, even if it's hundreds of years ago, uh, loads and loads of respect from Lord Riggs for you and your family. And it's great uh, for, you, for your grandkids to understand the family history first, then to learn the world history. And I would really emphasise the importance of teaching young kids today, not just local history, but world history. It's one of the big problems America has because they're too inward thinking, too inward looking. They don't know anything about Australian history or European history or definitely not Middle East history. And that's why it builds resentment and wars develop from resentment. So be outward looking, 
learn as much as you can. Be sponges about the other countries in the world, little kids. And in the meantime, learn a little bit about horse racing, not so much gambling. Gamble responsibly. But if you're over 18 and uh, you've never uh, studied horse racing before, have a look at Sky Racing uh, on your TV if you've got Foxtel or uh, racing.com. And uh, there are some very good programs on those TV stations that can teach you all about the ins and outs of horses and what what particular horse is likely to come first in a race or come second or third. And you get to know the jockeys and who are the good jockeys, who are the good trainers. It's, it, it's, a, it's a good interest. It's very good for my brain. It keeps me from going senile or getting Alzheimer's because it keeps the brain ticking over. There's so many variables. And when you finally do tip a winner or you pick a roughie that comes a place, gee, it's a thrill. It's a great thrill, even if you don't have a cent on it. Like Lord Riggs, I invented a thing called Fantasy Flutters, and it's to help problem gamblers wean themselves off heavy gambling by just pretending they've got about $1,000 every race and seeing how they would have gone. And if they're no good at tipping and they lose, inverted commas, guess what? They've saved themselves lots and lots of money by not gambling. That's the beauty of Lord Reg's game called Fantasy Flutters. Anyway, I've waffled on a little bit too much today. All the very best. If you're having a few little shekels here or there, I do hope I've helped to bring you a little bit of luck. Bye for now.